Hello, today is Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. When you buy technology, the easy choice is to buy it from your incumbent supplier. And frankly, if you have a good relationship with that supplier and a contract with competitive pricing, that's probably the right choice. But when you're looking at a new technology like SD-WAN, handing the business to your incumbent, well, that probably needs some further thought. On today's podcast, we're going to discuss the decision process enterprises will want to consider when buying SD-WAN. To do that, I'm joined by Keith Cook, a fellow TC2 director and a longtime buddy of mine. Hey, Keith, thanks for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome, Joe, and thank you. You're right about that. We have been friends and colleagues for a long time. We both have war stories about our clients' decision process for buying new network technologies, like MPLS or SIP trunking, back when those were new and the next big thing. Oh, yeah, SIP trunking. You once wrote an article for Network World about SIP trunking and using your incumbent. Joe, it's crazy that you remember that. It was almost a decade ago, back in 2013. I wrote an article in Network World called Don't Just Blindly Buy SIP Trunking Service from Your Incumbent Telecom Provider. And now, even though SD-WAN is becoming mainstream, I still see some clients making a similar mistake, or at least they're tempted to. But as you mentioned, some of the key tenets of that article are just as true now when it comes to picking an SD-WAN solution. So do you want to share more? Uh, Sure, of course. What I'm talking about today mostly is the SD-WAN control function or the SD-WAN overlay, not the underlying network transport, which is typically be a mixture of MPLS, dedicated internet, or even broadband, although I will briefly touch on that at the end. But when you're evaluating your SD-WAN options, or any greenfield technology for that matter, it's best to look beyond your current incumbent transport supplier as you consider your choices. Now, we both know that lots can go wrong if you just blindly commit to your incumbent provider. That's absolutely right, Joe. If you don't look beyond your incumbent and without doing proper due diligence, I can almost guarantee several things. You may not obtain the best fit software overlay for your specific needs. You'll end up with suboptimal commercial terms. You will get less robust SLAs if you get any SLAs at all. And sadly, you'll probably pay more than you should. You know, Keith, those are pretty crummy results. But why is that? I mean, why do you suppose that your trusted partner, that is your incumbent provider, why do they play these games? Well, incumbent carriers strive to build barriers to any option other than a direct path from their current service to whatever their new service is. But since the brains of SD-WAN lie in the software and the network carriers don't have those software capabilities natively, they've developed partnerships. And sometimes it's even with a single preferred partner. That partner may not be the best option for your organization's unique and individual needs. And there are a new range of SD-WAN managed service providers who may provide a more responsive and better support or a lower cost service model. Okay, so what is best practice for buying the SD-WAN solution? Well, you should drive your sourcing process by starting with a detailed assessment of your requirements. And all your requirements should be considered, not just those related to the technical solution. Some other examples are what type of service delivery model do you require? What type of funding for the upfront cost? Is it going to be one-time CapEx or amortized OpEx? Because there are upfront costs. Do you need a managed service? Or will your organization manage the solution itself? Ideally, the sourcing will be done via a competitive process. Think RFP. But if RFP is not possible and you do intend to sole source via directed negotiations, I recommend obtaining assistance to both help you explore the service alternatives and then with the subsequent negotiations with whomever you select. Also, competitively source the transport underlay services or at least have multiple options for those. The pricing of internet services varies greatly, and particularly with broadband services for any given site. And Joe, I know that you've covered best practices on sourcing technology on previous podcasts, so I won't go into detail there, but just know that a competitive procurement is almost always the best way to go. Yeah, it sure is. So, Keith, do you have any final thoughts? I guess I'd summarize by saying that while it may be tempting to simply default to an SD-WAN solution that is advocated by your incumbent supplier, 
I encourage you to do the proper due diligence. Your move to SD-WAN is a key milestone along the arc of your enterprise's network lifecycle, and it's one that you simply must get right. Finally, please understand this. I'm not saying never award your incumbent, but just make sure you make them earn your business and do what's best for you, not them. Ensure you know all your options. Your sourcing efforts will be compromised if you don't look beyond your incumbent, or for that matter, if you give any particular supplier an inside track to your business. It requires a bit more work on your part, but it's well worth it. Okay, thank you, Keith. You know, I like this type of podcast. Short, but packed with tons of useful information. If you'd like to talk about your company's SD-WAN needs or you have other ICT requirements that you'd like to discuss, you can contact Keith, me, or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues by giving us a call or dropping us an email. You can also stay up to date by subscribing to these podcasts, by checking out our websites, and by following us on LinkedIn.